Welcome, folks, one and all, to Let's Play Star Trek Judgment Rights, a PC point-and-click adventure game developed and published by Interplay in 1993. Judgment Rights is the sequel to the 25th anniversary, a game that I Let's Played quite a while ago on this channel. There was also a point-and-click adventure game with first-person combat elements in the form of the space combat. There are a few notable improvements with uh, this game that was released only a short time after the original game using this first-person um, slash point-and-click adventure game engine. It's sort of a hybrid engine in the fact that it has both elements. Now, to start with, the voice acting uh, sound quality has improved, and this game does reprise the entire original main voice acting cast that the first game did. A notable point to make there is that this game is the last time that DeForest Kelly reprised the role of the Dr. McCoy, with the exception of a cancelled game that was uh, being worked on by Interplay between 1997 and 2002, I believe it's called Secret of Vulcan Fury, that game was never released, so this game is in fact the last time he ever reprised the role, which is a bit sad, because I really liked his character in any of the uh, games or the uh, shows that I watched of that. So, what else has changed? Well, the uh, graphics are actually a little sharper as well, and they have a fair bit more animation in it as well. If you compare this game to the uh, previous game, the 25th anniversary, you'll notice especially that on the uh, bridge, there's animation for when people are talking. And there's also animation in-game, additional to uh, what there would have been in the uh, previous one. The most notable change you can see on the screen here. This is the screen that comes up as soon as the introductory cutscene is finished, if you don't have a uh, save file. And that is that you can select your space combat level. Now there are three different difficulties, Federation Cadet, Academy Graduate, and Commissioned Officer. The difference being, as it says here, in uh, Federation Cadet, there are no space combat encounters on the actual missions if you stay on the correct course. If you deviate and go to the incorrect star system for a mission, you are presented with a very easy combat fight. So if, as long as you uh, follow the star map and don't uh, go off course, you will encounter no space combat whatsoever. The second difficulty is Academy Graduate, which basically means that if you uh, follow the right course, you'll encounter some very easy combats. If you deviate off course, you'll encounter full strength enemies. The final one, which is the one I'm actually going to plan on playing at, is a Commissioned Officer, which it says is hard difficulty, but in actual fact it should just say normal, because in um, on the Commissioned Officer difficulty, both the ships you encounter on missions and the ones that you deviate off course for are actually on the full strength, so they're at normal difficulty. So I'm going to be playing it on Commissioned Officer, because if there's anything that uh, we know that I'm good at, it's the space combat in this game. I'm not particularly good at the space combat in this game, but fortunately it's not very common. Now... One more thing to note about this game is, uh, much like the uh, original game, there is the uh, percentage score for each mission that you do, which pretty much means that you, uh, depending on what choices you make, at the end, uh, Starfleet will rate your performance in a mission, and at the end will actually rate you overall for your performance throughout all of the missions in this uh, game. So, thinking carefully about what choices to make is actually quite important. This game does have a episodic um, nature, much like the uh, first game in this series did, and was praised uh, shortly after it was released for being the most like the original actual uh, television series in the form of its episodes. Now, we're going to pick Commissioned Officer here, perhaps against my better judgement, and we're going to go straight into the game. After one note which is the sound in this game. While it is improved in terms of quality, the game still doesn't have a very good selection of sound balancing options. In the actual menu, there is only really the option for turning either the uh, music on and off, or the sound on and off. There's also options for subtitles. I currently have it set up so that the subtitles are always present, 
and the voice acting won't continue until I actually press for it to continue, which means that it won't just run on one after another, which is quite good because then it gives uh, time to consider what's being said. That said, the space combat is a little louder than the rest of the, um, the game, and I've tried my best to balance the sound compared to me and the actual game at all points, and I think I've come up with a happy medium. It's pretty much the best that I'm capable of doing with uh, without volume sliders, which this game doesn't have. So, without further ado, let's go for Commissioned Officer Difficulty and go straight into the first mission. Who knows, there might even be things linking this game to the last. Captain's log, stardate 6223.8. We are en route to the glorious Pebble Scientific Academy, where we... Interesting point there to make before we carry on here. In the first game, it had uh, DeForest Kelly introduce the uh, title of each of the episodes, so to speak. Not in this one, but it does show you who uh, wrote and directed each of the uh, missions, so that's something. Looks like Kirk's about to be interrupted by something, though. Let's find out what it is. I'm sure, much like the original game, it's going to be light-hearted and a little whimsical. Enterprise, this is Captain Luke Rayner of the USS Alexander. We have returned from the future. In eight days, the United Federation of Planets will be completely destroyed. A new... Oh. Oh dear. My god. So much for that whimsical tone, eh? No such thing in this game to start with. Straight into the action. Let's go. Captain's log supplemental. We have tracked the Alexander's course to Espoir Station, a scientific research facility in the Omega Maelstrom sector. We are about to set course for that system, hoping to discover the subject of its last ominous message. A very ominous message. Something has gone very seriously wrong if the entire Federation is destroyed eight days from now. We have eight days to solve it, though. Perhaps we can avert this terrible fate? Now, the, uh... Key bindings are exactly the same as they were in the previous game. If you press K, you go to the uh, options here. You have the ability to beam down. You have the captain's log. You have the options. We're going to save. save new game. We are indeed going to save. We're going to call it uh, LB1. That means that when we start the game from now on, there will be the option to uh, go to there. Now, we have various other keys as well. We can raise the shields with S. Raising shields. We can uh, arm the weapons with W. Arming weapons. But we don't want to do either of these because we're not going to end up in a combat situation here. Disarming weapons. Indeed. Notice the animation there for uh, Chekhov saying that. Lowering shields, Captain. Let's talk to Spock. Perhaps you should access my library computer, sir. The library computer might not really help, but um, not at this point. There are also other commands. Uh, C does activate the computer. A does target assessment. If you're against some opponents, you can uh, have a look at their shields and hull rather than your own. D is for damage control. Uh, e is for emergency power that Scotty over there on the left can uh, access once per combat. Uh, H is comms. O is to orbit a station or a planet. And L is for weapon lock, which will show you when you're going to fire what is um, your chance of actually hitting. If it's uh, red on the uh, weapon lock, you'll actually hit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the star map here. Now, all of these are potential locations. You will not necessarily be going to all of these, and going to the wrong one, indeed, will get you into serious bother. I believe it's this one we want to go to. Engage! Aha! Cutscene there. Two Elasi frigates are decloaking. Oh! Well, combat right away! If you remember the Elasi from the previous game, they're basically space pirates. The Elasi were actually quite important at the end of the first game, uh, I'll note. In addition to its cloaking capabilities, the lead ship is mounted with three forward-firing photon torpedo bays. That is a really bad thing to tell me, Spock. Could you have said instead that they didn't have any weapons at all and were just going to try and ram into us? Well, looks like we're going to have to fight. We are being hailed. 
probably to say, we're going to destroy you. Mwahahahaha. Let's see if that in fact is true. On screen. This is Captain Bevander Zane of the Alassi Frigate Interdiction. You are no match for our new Storm Class frigates. We demand your immediate surrender. Are we really going to surrender? I don't think so. Forget it. That is one option. Give us five minutes to decide. That is another option. No matter how good your ships are, they're still being captained by lice-ridden Alasi hypocrites. I would lose all self-respect surrendering to a person like you. Forget it. Well, there are basically three options. One of them is uh, the blunt and uh, short one. Give us five minutes to decide. One of them is just going to basically uh, delay. And the other one... No matter how good your ships are, they're still being captained by lice-ridden Alasi hypocrites. I would lose all self-respect surrendering to a person like you. Yeah, I don't think we're going to use that one, that's for sure. Definitely don't think we're going to use that one. I think we're just going to Give say that... Um, to decide. I think we're just going to say that uh, he should forget it. Forget it. Yep, seems like a good idea. I believe that you humans have a fantastic expression. Your choice, your funeral. Goodbye, Enterprise. Let's see if we can fight them. Arming weapons. There are only two of them. We should be able to do this. Now, if we go to nine for impulse power to go faster, there is an Alasi ship. Now, if we put the uh, weapons lock on there, we should be able to uh, determine how um, we're going to hit them. Also, you'll notice on the little radar in the middle in front of Kirk, there is an additional addition, which is the one that we've last hit does now appear on the... Uh, Scanner is a bigger dot to imply that we have hit him. Also, we're getting shot at. This encounter shouldn't be very hard, though. Also, get used to that phaser sound. We're going to be hearing it a lot. Because we're basically going to get shot at a lot. We are not doing very well, however, at uh, dealing with these ships. Oh, no. That's quite a lot of damage. Fortunately, they won't be able to hit us all the time. They will have to get to us at some point. There's one. Hello. Whoa, come back here. Fortunately, the um, the ship does repair quite quickly. We have damage control if you want to... Uh, they only have one uh, forward-mounted uh, thing there. Let's have a weapon locker. Thank you. Let's see if that'll make any difference. Yeah, you see that there? If we fire here, we will hit. In theory. There we go. See? It's hitting. Much better. We have enough phaser banks to deal with you, sir. You're only a Lassie ships, after all. We will deal with you. The first combat is very difficult. Remember the first game? There wasn't any combat at all to begin with? There was none. Unfortunately, this Lassie ship is in trouble and is, in fact, dead. Now, we want to have another weapon. We want another uh, weapon lock here. That is one Alassie ship dealt with. Maybe I've actually got better at this space combat game. I doubt it somehow. I doubt it. The Enterprise can easily deal with Alassie ships, though. It is, after all, one of the finest vessels in Starfleet at this point. Sent to explore strange new worlds. Our weapons are locked. Thank you. I believe pressing L there, even though there was no target before, actually just uh, removed the lock. There we go. We should be able to deal with this. We haven't seen the one with the uh, three forward-firing photon torpedoes, though. Maybe this is the one. Perhaps this is, in fact, the one. Hello. We got you there. Ha <laughs> ha! Come back and fight like a starship. Our starship's bigger. Definitely is bigger. Also, oh, missed that shot there. Definitely miss that shot. We are going very fast. I imagine if we went slower, we might be able to get better shots. But if memory serves, if you just go slower, what tends to happen is that they just basically shoot you to oblivion because you're a very slow target. It will eventually come into range. It's firing at us now, but our ship is in pretty good condition. We should be uh, uh, shooting from behind us there, you can see. We should be uh, able to get some shots in soon. Scotty will be able to get his uh, damage control teams to repair that quite quickly. Oh, see? He's already on it. Now, where are you? You're very close. Come on, Alassie pirates. There you are. Hello! There we go. We'll definitely win in the long run here. 
They're only Alasi pirates after all. Now, if these were Klingon ships, we'd be in some serious trouble. There we go. These uh, should hit. There we go. Excellent. I like the lock-on system. That's a good thing. Oh, hello. You should not be running away, sir. Not good for you at all. Not good for you at all, sir. How are you actually doing? We should, uh, find out. Analysis. Oh. oh, wow, you're not doing that well at all. Yeah, that uh, design is pretty similar to uh, how it was before. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. I actually uh, forgot that this game starts pretty much with combat. Oh, that's not good, though. That's not good. Fortunately, the damage control teams will be uh, focusing on fixing that. Hello. We will destroy you, Alasi pirates. Then we'll actually carry on with the uh, game itself. Oh yeah, you're really not doing very well at all. Aha! Victory! Are we gonna let them flee? Probably not. Terribly sorry, sir. Terribly sorry. Now there is a um, there is a station nearby. We have engaged in a battle against the Alasi. I cannot help but wonder if there is a connection between them and the message that we have received from the Alexander. That is probably very, very likely, Kirk. Very likely. Captain, you don't seriously expect us to believe that the Alasi could threaten the Federation. It's it's possible. I mean, it is possible. Those Cossacks couldn't threaten my grandmother. They certainly tried to threaten us. I mean, two ships there did put up a significant fight against the Enterprise. It does seem inconsistent with what we know of. Um, you meant to say something else there, Spock? You, um, kind of got cut off there. You didn't finish off what you were saying. I'm still suspicious, Mr. Spock. Just call it human intuition. Ah, Spock would, uh, question that human intuition. Captain, I'm receiving a message from the station manager. Ah, we have arrived at the station. We didn't even need to press the orbit button there. It did it for us automatically. On screen. All right, let's talk to the station manager. Captain, I'm James Monroe, commander of Espoir Station. We witnessed your battle against the Alasi. They've bothered us a lot in the last few weeks. We're very grateful. No problem. Do you mind if we come down and take a look at your station? That is a pretty neutral response there. You'll also recognize the uh, sound in the background there is a, uh, that first uh, little bit of music there. Very similar to uh, one that was in the first game, and this one. In fact, they're pretty much exactly the same. Really? Then why haven't you filed reports with Starfleet? Now that one is a little confrontational. We've heard disturbing reports about your activities. We've come to take a look at your research. And that one just warns them that we suspect something. If they're working against us, or something suspicious is going on, that is a terrible, terrible response. You mind if we come down and take a look at your station? That is a much better response. Espoir Station would be glad to greet a starship as famous as the Enterprise. We'll send coordinates and you may transport aboard at your convenience. Oh, thank you very much. Let's talk to, uh, Spock here. The mission of Espoir Station is to study gravity's end, the only known proto-universe phenomenon in the galaxy. Oh! Proto-universe phenomenon? I've heard a lot of things, Mr. Spock. The proto-universe phenomenon, or proto-event, is a place where a Big Bang occurring in another universe deposits matter into ours. It is also noted for intense space-time distortions. Oh, I hope that's not at all significant to what might be going on in this, uh, this episodic nature of, uh, encounters here. The equipment on the station is highly advanced, but they appear to be of non-Federation design. There are areas protected by force fields, which sensors cannot penetrate. That is also very suspicious. Could a rupture have occurred in this proto-event that would destroy this section of the galaxy? That's a good question. That is possible. However, a rupture of that intensity would almost certainly have destroyed the Alexander. We do not have many facts, but those we have do not support that hypothesis. Thank you, Mr. Spock. And I believe that might actually do for this first video. That combat was uh, quite long, and we've been given a uh, suitable introduction to what's going on here. So let's save. Save new game. Nope. Replace previous game. Indeed. We'll replace this one. There we go. And when we come back, folks, we shall beam down onto the station 
and get a feel of exactly what's going on. Also, we might want to lower the shields. Lowering shields, Captain. We don't need those right now. Disarming the weapons. And we don't need those either. So, I shall get you next time, folks. And when we come back, the intrepid crew of the Enterprise will enterprise like they've never enterprised before. They're going to enterprise a lot in this. Also, we can just uh, click people, actually, at this point, and just uh, get things going there, which is quite handy. We can just click Spock and talk to him. But uh, for now, next time, we shall beam down to the station. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, Kirk? A lot could possibly go wrong. This is Star Trek. A lot could go wrong. I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.